you are a millionaire yourself. But after talking to 45 super, super rich people, anything new that you have learned? One of the results was I found out there's absolutely no relation between their performance at school and university on the one hand and their financial okay. success later on the other hand. But there were other things that were much more important. For example, my question is if someone asking you for some the most important advices on how to become rich in this world right now, what would be your advice? Okay, first advice for people here in Vietnam. Hello and welcome to uh, the Quoc Khan Show podcast. This is Quoc Khan, your host. And uh, I'm in a different setting today because we are shooting in Hanoi for the first time. And it's my uh, pleasure to welcome a special guest on my show today, Dr. Rainer Zetterman, the author of this book, The Wealth Elite, uh, in Vietnamese, Độc vị tâm lý, tâm lý hành vi của giới giàu và siêu giàu. So we're going to talk about the rich people. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you for inviting me. How are you? I'm great. I like it here in Vietnam. Congratulations on uh, the book in the Vietnamese version that just came out. Could you um, tell us more about yourself and uh, this project? What is it about? Yes, um, this is my second doctoral dissertation. So, And because I found out that there are a lot of books about how to become rich, some of them are good, some are not, but there's only very few science-based. In a lot of cases, it's only you know, individual opinion how to grow rich. And so I had the idea to write a dissertation, science-based, about personality traits of super rich people, to find out whether there's a correlation between personality traits on the one hand and financial success on the other hand. And so I uh, conducted interviews with 45 very rich people. Yeah. Most of them had a net worth between 30 million and 1 billion euros. Some had more. And with everyone I spoke between one and two hours. So in the end, I had 1,700 pages with transcription to analyze it and everyone had to complete a psychological test, the so-called Big Five test with 50 questions. So I had a lot of things to analyze in the end to find out how what's their personality traits, these super rich people. Wow, interesting. 45 super rich people, 45 interviews to understand more about them. So what are some of the key takeaways that you can remember? One example, they enjoyed swimming against the stream, like non-conformist. Okay. And I think it's logical. If you do the same thing as everyone else, you can't get super rich. Hmm. You have to act different, and to act different, you have to think different, of course. And one of my interviewers, he was very rich, some billions of euros, one of the richest in Germany. Mm -hmm. He became mil uh, rich with milk and with yogurt. And so his favorite animals are cows, mm. of course. And he gave me a funny picture. And this picture is there's a herd of cows walk, walking along a path, 100 cows. On the left side, there's a very green and lush field. Mm. And on the other side, there's a field that is not as near as lush, only some cramps of grass. And 99 out of this 100 cows go to the left side. Mm. But what happens, the grass is eaten very quickly. And only one cow goes to the right side. Okay. And he said, I'm the cow who goes to the right side. So this means swimming against the stream. Or another example, he's not a part in this book, but in another book, Jim Rogers. I mentioned Jim Rogers. Okay. And um, he's an a investor. He became very rich when he was young in the 80s with a hedge fund. Uh, with, he did it together with George Soros. And this fund had 4,000 700% while the S&P index in the United States had only 47% at the same time, so very successful. And he told me this funny story. 
he was very young and he was invited in Manhattan mm -hmm. to a fancy dinner. All the other bankers and investors were much older than he was. Okay. He was the youngest at the table. And then one of them said to his neighbor, not very loud, but so loud that everyone could hear it, how can someone be so stupid to invest in Lockett shares? You know, at this time, Lockett, there were all, every day bad news in the newspaper. Uh, the price has dropped and so and, and everyone laughed, and they laughed at him. Mm. So it was not a very funny situation for him. But later, he earned a lot of money with this. And he told me, lessons learned, the louder the people laugh at you, okay. the better it is. And this fits to my own experience also. I became also rich with this contrarian approach to swim against the stream. This is my own story. And so this was also what these people, one of the things that they shared with me, well, nonconformism. So non-conformism, so being different. Yes. And uh, I guess that's one of the common uh, personality from 45 super rich people that you have interviewed. This is one, but, but of course there are more. I, I give you only one yeah. point that's very important. How to deal with setbacks and crisis. Okay, failures. Because every everyone uh, was not always successful, even if you look the biography of people like Warren Buffett or Steve Jobs and so I think you know they were not always successful they had a lot of uh, uh, setbacks and, and crises and, and failures but the difference is how they react and for most of the people it's this way if they are successful they take credit for their success our arms are smart mm -hmm. and to his wife so you also know how smart am I if they are successful but if they fail they don't take the responsibility for their failure they blame other people. Hmm. They blame society. They blame the market. Oh, it was the market. It was society. It's fault of my parents, whatever. Not this rich people. They took credit not only for their success, but they took also responsibility for their setback and failure. Hmm. This is a difference. Also, there are a lot of things that they have in common, but very important thing. Right. I mean, you are a millionaire yourself. You are a rich person yourself. But after talking to 45 super, super rich people, anything new that you have learned? Anything su surprised you about this? Uh, there are a lot of very interesting things. And one thing was, I asked them, how were you at school, good or bad? And I was very good at university, even the, the, the best one. With, uh, okay. but, but there were a lot of others who even hadn't had a high school degree or were very, very bad at school, very, very bad at university. So one of the results was I found out there's absolutely no relation between their performance at school and university on the one hand and their financial okay. success later on the other hand. But there were other things that were much more important. Mm. For example, what they did outside school, alongside school. Mm. Half of them were competitive athletes. One after the other told really? me like this and this and that. So this was, uh, I think it was important for them because they learned how to win, but much more important, they learned how to lose, how to deal with setbacks and with crisis. We had this before. And another thing was, I asked them, how did you earn money alongside school or university? Mm. When I was young, most of the students, they worked for an hourly wage, like factory, tax driver, restaurant, but these rich people, they didn't work for an hourly wage. They earned money with very, with early entrepreneurial activities, especially in sales. Okay. They sold a lot of different things like insurance or real estate investment fund or used cars, used motorcycles or whatever. They had so many ideas what to sell. And I think these experiences were much more important for them than what they learned at school and university. Yeah. I don't know how it is in Vietnam, but I never studied uh, for uh, MBA or economies, but I had some girlfriends who studied, and so I saw what, what they did. Mm. And they learned all about mathematics, formula, and whatever, things I never needed okay. as an entrepreneur. Yeah. But what was really important, for example, to learn how to sell what was very important, they didn't learn it at school and university. Maybe you can't learn it at university. Mm. Uh, they learned it learning by doing. And this is maybe one important result. In psychology, 
we distinguish between two ways how you can learn. Mm. The first is called explicit learning. It means academic learning, book wisdom, school, university. Yeah. The Book's other smart. thing you call yeah. implicit learn uh, learning. It's like learning by doing or school of life. Okay. And Street smart, huh? Yes, exactly. And academic learning results, you have a diploma or like I, two PhDs or whatever. But implicit learning, you get you no know, papers or for this. But for these entrepreneurs, it was much more important, this implicit learning, what they learned with their early entrepreneurial activities or as competitive athletes. And implicit learning results in implicit knowledge. And I have an easier word. This is intuition or gut feeling. And when I ask them, how do you make your decisions? It's more that you analyze things or more with your intuition, gut feeling. Of course, we use both, every one of us use both of them, yes? But most of them told me, no, gut feeling is much more important for me. But a lot of people think gut feeling is something maybe irrational or even mystical, but this is wrong. It's gut feeling, it's only another word for implicit knowledge, and this is a result for implicit learning. And so I, I, I learned a lot, especially about how important implicit learning is. So the gut feeling decisions and the gut feeling um, reasons might come from your experience. Yes. Right. Yes, of course. You are not born with this. It's <laughs> result from your all your. How, how about you? Do you make your decision by gut feeling or mind analysis? Different to say. I <laughs> maybe both. Yes. Sometimes maybe more on the analytical side. So, but so I'm not typical for yeah. for them. Um, you mentioned selling skills. Yes. Um, and I think that's is. That is a very important skill for the rich people. You know how to sell. Absolutely. If you don't know how to sell, you can't be successful because it's, it's everything is sales. It's not only about selling a product or selling a service. Hmm. Um, they told me everyone, everything is sales. If you want to convince, you, you, you hire a new employee for your company, mm -hmm. it's sales. You have to convince him to work yeah. with your company, not with another one. If you go maybe to the government to get a permission, you have to convince him it's sales. Mm -hmm. And everything in life is sales. Even if you maybe you reach out to, to, to meet a girl on the street, yes, or wherever, or a nightclub, yeah. yes, you have to sell something mm. yourself, maybe. Yeah. So everything is True. sales. And so th they told me sales. And, and because most of them became richest entrepreneurs. This is also another result. A lot of people think they become rich with maybe stock investment or with uh, even with Bitcoin or with whatever. <laughs> I, I don't believe in this uh, because if you look at the list of the richest people in the world, uh, most of them became rich as entrepreneurs. Look mm. at uh, Elon Musk, for example, with Tesla, or Jeff Bezos with Emerson, or Larry Page, Sasser Prin with uh, Google, or Mark Zuckerberg, with uh, Facebook. Maybe Warren Buffett, you can say he became rich with investments, but it's a little bit of a different story. I ca could speak long about this. But if you look at the list of the richest people, I think even in Vietnam, it's all okay. entre entrepreneurs. And um, for an entrepreneur, it's very important that you can sell. And if you can't do it, then you have to find a partner who can sell. Okay, first advice for people here in Vietnam. Stop thinking about investment in cryptocurrency or any <laughs> stocks. It's more likely that you will become poor than you become rich. So I guess now um, money is not a concern for you. But for now, what is your true passion now? Just writing books and sharing knowledge? Yes, um, I... You know, in Germany, I wrote my autobiography okay. and I added a chapter two years ago. And then I said, OK, now I reached my financial goals. Of course, more money is welcome, but this is not my priority. Mm. It was not before I was 40. It was not after I was 60. It was only 20 years mm. I made this money. And so I, uh, the headline of the chapter was, I will conquer the world. You will so, conquer the world. That, yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> 
I conquer the world. Uh, with the book my translated message, to many languages. With my, yes, with interviews like this, and I've so many. When I was now in, I I mentioned this in this uh, five um, Latin American countries. In every country, there were at least one page in Argentina, even four pages, the biggest newspaper interview with me. And in the most important TV station in Argentina, it was one hour. And two weeks ago, it was in Brazil, one hour. So people start to know why. It's, I'm only in the beginning now. I'm only beginning. For example, in Vietnam, not so many people know me right now. But after your interview, it will be some more. I hope so. so. <laughs> and I like it because to share it. You know, I was successful in life in different fields, but I want to share it with other people, what I know from my own experience, but also from my research. And another very important message for me is economic freedom. Why economic freedom is so important. And I think Vietnam is a perfect example. The next book will be about Vietnam and Poland that I write. Mm. The title will be The Rise of the Dragon and the White Eagle. Nice. How nations escape poverty. And you know why? Because Poland and Vietnam have a lot in common. What really? A lot of people don't know. Wow. You had this terrible war know. for 30 years. You yeah. know, terrible war. In Poland, they had war only six years, but millions of people died there in, in Poland, you know, Second World War. After this, they had this planned economy system. You had it here. Mm -hmm. They had it there. But it was not re really successful, neither in Poland, not in Vietnam. But then in Vietnam, you started this Doi Moi reforms mm. in 1986. Yeah. And then it started to become better and better. I give you one number. I think most of you people know. But even 1993... 80% of people in Vietnam lived in poverty, 80%. Today, it's less than 5%. It's, it's amazing. Why? Because economic reforms, doi moi reforms. Poland was the same. Poland was mm -hmm. the poorest socialist country in Europe. And now we call them Europe's growth champion mm. because they have incredible growth and standards of living improved. Why? Because economic freedom. You know it in Vietnam. It was successful. You started to become successful when you introduced private property, economic freedom. So, and the same in Poland. And so I, I would write this book and I'm fascinated. And all over the world, I speak about two topics. First topic is how to be successful, how to grow rich. We spoke today. And the other topic, how important is economic freedom for our society? It's, it's on you. Don't expect something from state, from the government or so. You have to do it. Definitely. And, and I like to share this philosophy with as many as possible people. And I get so many emails from people, for example, who read my books like uh, Dare to be Different and Crow Witch or this book. And a lot of people told me, this book changed my life. Mm. And you can't earn a lot of money with books. But this is what makes me really proud. If people come there on the street... They are. Aren't you the guy who read this book? Yes, I am. It is great because it changed my life. And then they start to tell me their story, what happened to them after the, they read the book. And this is the real you know, profit for me that I'll take out with, with writing books. If I have the feeling I changed the life of, of people, they started to think. For example, after this interview, there will be two groups of people. Yeah. One of them will say, well, Sounds not so bad. Maybe I start to write down my goals. Maybe I think about entrepreneurship. Mm. Maybe I think about to set bigger goals. And yeah. other people say, oh, no, it doesn't work. Let him tell. It's, I, I know it, it doesn't work. What do you think who will be more successful in life? I think it's clear. The people who are open <laughs> for new experience. Of course. This yeah. is the same one, one of the results here of the psychological test for these rich people. There are five personality traits, and one personality trait is openness for new experience, for new things. You know, there are some people, I know everything, don't tell me, oh, I know this, yes? But these are not the successful people. And this is what I like with Asian people. They are more curious than Americans, for example. I know Americans, and they have a lot of positive things, but one thing is more positive with people in Asia. They're in Asia, they are more curious hmm. for new things. I saw it in China, I saw it, saw it in Vietnam. With Americans, it's sometimes this way. Uh, we don't, it is very difficult even to get books translated in the United States because hmm. they think, oh, if it is important, there would be an American who said it before. We don't need it from <laughs> other people. Why? This is not the attitude in China. 
or, or, or in, in, in other mm. Asian countries, as in Vietnam or South Korea, they want to know more and more. And so is, hungry for success, I guess. Hungry for success and hungry to learn more, to learn more. And I think this is so very important. For me, is what is a sex, success, successful day? If I wake up in the morning and in the evening, mm -hmm. I'm smarter than I was in the morning because I learned something. Okay, so keep learning something new. Uh, yes, this Definitely. is so fascinating for yeah. me. Always learning new things. I know that you also did a survey on the topic of um, the public opinion about the rich people. Yes. Um, and you did a survey on, on Vietnam, Japan, uh, South Korea, and um, comparing to European countries and the U.S. Yes. Um, tell me about some of the key findings that you have found. Okay, first, what was the survey about? It was for another book that is also published right now in Vietnam. Mm. Uh, the English title, I can't say it in <laughs> is The Rich in Public Opinion. Okay. This is the first book about prejudice and stereotypes against rich people. It's an interesting because topic. Because I think rich people, they are minority. <laughs> they are minority, Always. of course. Yes. Always. And today it is this way. I don't know how it is in Vietnam, but in Europe, people are very, very sensitive if you say any critical things about any minority. Mm. But not against rich people. You can say even hate speech or bad things about rich people. And there are a lot of people who hate rich people. And do, they, a, do they hate rich people in Europe? Oh, not everyone, of course, <laughs> but there are a lot. You can find it. You can find posts, uh, you can find T-shirts on the Internet, kill the rich or eat the rich. <laughs> And you can even buy okay. an earring with a guillotine. The guillotine mm. is for rich people. Or in the United States, they positioned a guillotine in front of the house of Jeff Bezos, Emerson founder. Okay. And, uh, and here, I come from Berlin, and there was a demonstration, and there were these posters, kill your landlord, mm. for, for example. <laughs> yes. And so it's not everyone, of course. But you have it. A lot of uh, negative envy. It's envy. And I wanted to find out with this research how envious are people in different countries. Mm. And we developed a questionnaire, the same questionnaire, translated it in different languages. Okay. And then I calculated something that I call the social envy coefficient to compare how envious are people in different countries in only one number. And the result was most envious people were in France. They are the most envious. <laughs> really? Followed by Germany, my country. Okay. And then the least envious people were people in Japan, South Korea, and Vietnam. They had the most positive attitude. Of course, here were also envious people, but not so many as we have in Europe. And another thing, we asked everyone, how important is it for you to become rich? Mm -hmm. And this was a very interesting result for me. In Europe and United States, on average, it was 28%. 28%. 28%. four Asian countries, China, South Korea, Japan, Japan, Vietnam, it was 58%. 58%. 58, yes. So 30 A lot of people want to get control. rich. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, in, in, in Japan, it was 43%. In China, it was 50%. How about Vietnam? In, in, in South Korea, it was 63 And in Vietnam, it was 76%. The That's highest the, number. The highest number, I guess Vietnam so. Vietnam was number one. And then there was another difference between Vietnam and all other countries. Hmm. We, we distinguished you know, answers from male and female respondents. And in every other country, there were more men than women who said I that could they imagine, wanted coverage yeah. in every country, but not in Vietnam. Really? In Vietnam, it was more women than men. So the women want to get rich more? more. <laughs> yes, I think it was 80% women and 72% men. Also a lot of men here, but it, 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 it were more women. And, you know, I, I had, I think, a little bit, women are different in Vietnam from other countries. They are more ambitious to become rich, not only relying on men. I yep. thought I was now at foreign trade university in Hanoi. They told me 70 to 80 percent of the students there are female. Mm. At, uh, and I think this is one of the best universities here in Hanoi, foreign trade university. And um, I saw a statistic about Asian countries, how many women are in leading positions mm. of companies. And it was in Vietnam. 
and in Thailand, for example, 24, mm. and in Germany, it's 29%. So mm. you see, it's really a difference here. You wrote the book, um, the book, How to Become Rich and How to Be Famous. You had a book on um, interview with 45 super, super rich people. Um, I would say my question is if someone asking you for some, the most important advices on how to become rich in this world right now, yes. the changing world right now, there's so many things yes. changing up to COVID and yes, we're yes. looking to the future, uh, not the past, but looking to the future. Yes. What would be your advices? Okay, first advice for people here in Vietnam. Stop thinking about investment in cryptocurrency or any <laughs> stocks. It's more likely that you will become poor than you become rich. Okay. Invest everything in learning English. Why is that? Why is it so important? Yesterday I met a businessman here in Hanoi, but he came from Korea. And he told me, a lot of startups here, people who find startups, they came from rich families, so they had the possibility to, to have money to start. I have doubts whether it's so, I think it's not so important to have money if you found a new company. It's more about the idea, because there will be other people, maybe venture capitalists or private equity, who will give you money if you have the idea. Said so, yes, I agree, but there's the next problem. Hmm. These people, they don't speak English well, and maybe they have a good idea, but then they have to pitch for, then they have to pitch for getting money from venture capitalists. So they can't do it because they don't speak English. Mm -hmm. And so I, yesterday I had a press conference about my book and there was the same question. What would you recommend to young people in Vietnam? Should they invest in cryptocurrency or whatever? No, stop it. Invest in learning English. This is so very important because otherwise I think you speak much better English than I do. I, I have no talent for foreign languages. I have uh, this German accent, so I know. And I, I never had the opportunity to live as you did for a longer time in English speaking country. And I have absolutely no talent to learn foreign languages, but I understood you have to learn it. You don't have to be perfect, but you have to learn it. If not, you can't, if we speak about the future, you can't be successful, I can guarantee. So this is the first thing that I can recommend to everyone because otherwise you can't read a lot of interesting books. Not all interesting books are translated in vitamins. You can't see a lot of interesting uh, uh, videos or read articles on the internet. So this is the first thing. The next thing I recommend to you, start reading books about successful people that will motivate you. Uh, why is, book, is, is it important to, to read books? Maybe you say, okay, he's writing books, he wants that people buy it. Oh, of course I want it, there's a reason. I, I write books that people read it. So, but I mentioned Warren Buffett before, who, who read every single book with finance and money in the title when he was very young, mm. so with 10 years. Mm. So, and his partner, Charlie Munger, I think you heard about him, his partner, Warren Buffett. He's now, I think, almost 100 years old. His children call him a book on two legs. And why? Mm. Because they, they say every day he reads another book. I don't know how he do it. I can't read every day a book. But and not only about finance, so, but biographies, autobiographies about successful people, you can learn a lot. So young people, in a lot of cases, they don't read enough. So okay. they, had too, they spend too many times on social media and the internet. I spend also some, sometimes too much time there, mm. but it's important. First, second thing, read about successful people. You can learn from them. For example, my book, Dare to be Different and Grow Rich. I analyzed 50 biographies mm. of successful people. Yeah. Maybe you don't have the time to read all these 50 biographies as I did. So, so there's this book for you that you don't have to read 50 books, only one book to have all the results mm. from analyzing there. So this is another thing. Then. The third thing is write down your goals. I mentioned right. before, it makes such a big difference whether you write it down or not. So this is so very important. And then maybe the fourth very important thing, start learning how to sell. Right. You, you, can't, <laughs> you, 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 you can't learn it at the university, do something, start to sell, maybe on the internet or where, okay. wherever. 
but sales is so very important so and, you, and, and you should you should learn think about this very successful people there in this book they told me they owe so much of their success to their ability to sell and some people think you have to be born with or you have to be someone who speaks a lot so mm. uh, no i'm not a salesman it's not my to speak this is wrong now i speak a lot but if i sell something i don't speak a lot i mm. listen a lot because it's much more important to listen than to talk if you be good in sales to know what your client or a customer what he wants and then you can sell him if you talk all the time you will sell nothing so learn how to to to, to listen and learn how to sell and this is also very and you can only do it in in, in practice yes so le skills le very important learning by learning by doing yeah and don't spend all the time on the internet to look for this stock this stock this stock yes I have nothing against stock investments. You know, I'm I'm invested this in this uh, exchange traded fund that invests all. But I know that there are so many people who lost more money than they gained. Think more about entrepreneurship. Hmm. Think about how can I how you, as you did it, for example. You, you you told me you were an employee before, as I was. Mm -hmm. You were you was a journalist. Yes, yeah. I was a journalist. Yes. But did you become rich as a journalist? No. No, and I didn't become rich as a journalist. I earned good, but I spent everything every month. And then I started being an entrepreneur, my own company. So I became rich, and so is with all people. So, and maybe, maybe this is another good advice. Maybe you are an employee hmm. today, right now. Maybe I, I don't want to recommend to everyone go to your boss and quit your job and <laughs> found your company so because not 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 everyone will be a good entrepreneur try first to do something in your free time saturday evening sunday in the evening go up maybe one hour early in the morning start to do something and then you will find out whether you be successful or not a lot of people in this book did it this way First, they worked as employees for companies or as bank, for a bank, for example. Sure. And then they started on the side to do something else. And then they became more and more successful. The same was with me. I started it as a side job. Mm. And then when I earned more money with this than with my first job, okay. then I had the point with this, my boss, and I told him, I'll quit. And then he said, okay, why you want to do it? But we wanted to give you more money. Yes, mm. this is great, but I want to earn 1 million every year. Do you want to give me 1 million euros every year? No, we, <laughs> we don't want to. So, no, please understand, I have to quit. So, But first, I started alongside this job. And th these are some, I think, if, if the people who listen now to us, if they follow only this, this five recommendations or so, they will be so much more successful but again there will be some some people now they write down one two three and then they start to think about it and they do it. they will be successful the other oh let him talk it's all i i heard it before i know that it doesn't work this will people will be not successful I action is everything action yes. is everything yes uh, because you told me you are the kind of guy who uh, do many things in your life at different stage of your life um, how do you figure out what do you want to do in each different stage of life you have you have to you have to do it this is by the way actually so important because i i was here in another university i think national economics university neu or so in in hanoi and there was there were only like maybe 50 young uh, uh, students there. And then I did something. I, I had here 500,000 from your dong, yeah, currency, 500,000. Yes, and I put it there and I asked, who want to have it? Who want to mm -hmm. have it? They didn't understand really what happens there. Mm -hmm. Then some, whatever, so who want to have it? Some started to raise their hands, but nothing happened. Another raised their hands, and then one of these, this way female, she ran to me and she got it. 
What was the difference? Action. Action. This was the difference. The other one, they thought maybe, uh, will I really get it for free? I go there, the others will laugh at me. Maybe I make an issue of myself if I go there and it's not for me. And though they thought they had this, you know, inner dialogue, but she not. Maybe at first, but she acted. And this is the difference. And this is entrepreneurship. Some people tell me whether you're successful or not in life it has a lot to do with luck or with coincidence. I don't believe in this. I never met someone who had only always good luck or bad luck in life. This doesn't happen. It's not so important whether you met happy coincidences, mm -hmm. but first that you recognize this. Yeah. You recognize this. there is something, mm. and then the next thing, action. Interesting. Thank you for the advices. Um, I guess um, I have another question for you uh, because you told me you are the kind of guy who uh, do many things in your life at different stage of your life, historian, journalist, um, entrepreneur, and now a book writer. Um, how do you figure out what do you want to do in each different stage of life? Because someone could have a clear passion of the, what they want to do, but um, someone like you at each different stage of life, you do whatever you at that time, do whatever you want to be successful at that time, and then moving up. How do you figure out what you want to do? Well, this is a gut feeling. You, you, you fell in love with some kind of activity. It's like you fell in love with a woman. How does it happen? You don't analyze anything. Or okay. Like just, go, this. just go for it with a gut yes. feeling? Yes. You, you have to love it because you have to love it even more than your, your wife or girl because you will spend much more time with this activity than you will spend with your wife or with a girl. So you have to, to really love it even more. And so if it is about love, it's not about analysis or something like this. You so have you, to don't, really you, don't, you, don't, you didn't set out like a, a long-term plan for it at that time? Oh, uh, uh, yes. I, I, I don't be, believe so much in planning. I, I believe in goals, but not in planning. I believe that you have to have a big goal and then to start. Hmm. But what happens in the way between... Along the way, you can uh, learn and no, change. No, you can't predict. I, I, I will compare it with a you know, GPS system in your car. Hmm. You want to go from here to another city. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have to put in, in the GPS your goal. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have to drive and pay attention to the traffic. But the way where you have to go, you don't have to know. Because okay. GPS system will. And this is, I believe, in the power of the subconscious mind. You have to program your subconscious mind like a computer. This is what I did. I have one chapter in this. Maybe next time we how can do you, speak How do you program your subconscious mind? I tell mind. you. You find, by the way, in one of the chapters of this book, Dare to be Different and Grow Rich. Mm. Not in this book, in another book. Okay. You find it there. How did I do it? There's a method in, you call it in uh, German or English, autogenic training. It's, uh, the founder was a uh, term or uh, psychologist. 50 years ago, or more than, no, it was almost now, I think, 80 or 90 years ago. Mm. And it's a method how to relax mm. very fast, a relaxing method. And it's like self-hypnosis. Mm. It's like, first he worked with hypnosis, and then he saw, okay, you can do also uh, self-hypnosis. And I knew, it, I know this method. I write about this in the book. Okay. And then uh, lie there in the bed, or even you can sit there, on a chair in a, in a relaxed position like this, then you start it to, to have this you know, formula. Mm. Th these formulas are the same for everyone else. But then, if you are in the state, very, very calm, or subconscious mind, you can start programming, for example, I start then, my net worth at the end of the year will be this and that. Mm. And I did it every year. Wow. You no, know, every day. Every day. I wrote down the goal New Year. Okay. But then I did it every day. Every day. This will be my net worth the end of the year. Interesting. And for me it worked. It's because this is the same with the GPS. You know, you have to have your goal. This is I don't believe so much in planning. Planning sounds for me like you have to know before I have to do this and this and that. But you don't you, you, you can't know it before mm. how it works. Sure. More important than planning is goal setting. And there's a scientific theory, I have it here in this book, about the wealth elite 
the goal setting theory. And one of the results was that people who set concrete and higher goals are more successful than people who set themselves no goals or only low goals. I got it. And goal setting is so important. But then goal setting is only the first thing. Then you have to program your subconscious mind that your subconscious mind will show you where you have to go. You have to see it like in a movie, like in a picture. For example, only some years ago, I wrote down this goal, I will conquer the world. So for me, maybe some people laughed at it, but now it happens, my friends saw it. Wow. I'm everywhere, all over the because world. Because you're connected to your subconscious mind yes. back the, then. Yes, the, the, I did the same thing, yes. And you know, now, now it happens everywhere. I'm in Europe, I'm in the United States, I'm in Asia, I'm, I'm in Latin America, I'm, I'm everywhere. And it's only starting now, like here in, in Vietnam. So it works. And this is what is so fascinating for me, that you, every one of us is like a computer, hmm. but you ha can choose whether other people type therein their goals mm -hmm. and you act according to their program okay. from other people, maybe your boss, every morning yeah. program you what you have to do <laughs> or whether you use it yourself and, and sometimes an ex-girlfriend she told me ah it's crazy you program <laughs> yourself like a computer isn't this crazy i said no it's not crazy it's crazy if i let allow other people to program my computer interesting. it's not crazy if i do it by myself interesting i'll, I'll try that sometime yes interesting so subconscious mind you can reprogram it yes, by yourself absolutely very interesting. Write out goals, set it big, and action. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing. Dr. Rainer Zatterman, the author of The Wealth Elite and many other books as well. Uh, some of them are available in Vietnamese, so check them out to learn about the wealthiest people in the planet and how to become rich. Thank you so much for sharing, and I hope next time you may have a chance to write about 45 super, super rich people in Vietnam, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, when I go on, even I had the plan for this, but I even, yes, I really had the plan since yeah. two years, but I need someone who makes the contacts because I don't know them and who tell me, is he an honest person? Because this is very important for me, you know, not sure. all pitch rich people <laughs> came rich, some maybe dishonest or only because of their connection. I'm, I'm interested in self-made sure. people in honest right. way. And I need someone. Okay. to make this context All right. and this interviews and translate and then I hopefully one day I, I can do it. Yes, it's really Maybe my, we can work together my, on that. Yeah, my, let's my, connect my, some my people. All right. yes. Thank you so maybe, much. Maybe something <laughs> we could do together. Why not? Why not? Thank you so much for sharing and uh, thank you so much for watching and um, check the book out if you want to learn more about some of the wealthiest people in European countries. Uh, thank you so much and uh, please support us by uh, Subscribing to the channel, uh, give us some comments, and follow us on many different podcast platforms. I'll see you next time. Thank you.